Mm. Hello, hello, and welcome back, or welcome. I am book lover Lorna, and today we're going to talk about the books that I read in April. Yes, it's now May, so we'll talk about last month's books, which is April. Now, I thought this was going to be another month where my reading went down the drain and I only ended up reading like four or something books, but I actually managed to do seven. So only one off of my eight goal for each month. So it's not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. I squeezed quite a lot in in the last week. Not going to lie to you guys. Um, was a bit of a panic station because I hadn't read an awful lot. Now the seven books that I have read this month has taken me to 36 books so far this year, which I think is about three or four ahead of schedule to get to 100 by the end of the year. I am thinking that it's looking kind of challenging now to get to my 100, but you know, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep trying. I've got loads of books. It's not that I'm short on books. We all know that. I've got way too many books, so it's not that I don't have enough books to read. It's just the time and, you know, gyms are opening again this week as well, so that's going to take away chunks of my time. I need to just sit down and dedicate to reading rather than scrolling on my phone, which to be fair, I haven't been doing a lot of. I haven't been doing a lot of scrolling on my phone on Instagram. Um, I miss a lot of things when people mention them to me, so that's obviously not the problem that I'm having at the moment, um, but could be doing with doing more reading. So I need to like utilise every minute of the day to be reading. So like I said, seven books this month. Three of them were NetGalley ARCs, advanced reading copies, um, which, of books which hadn't come out, which now have. I think all of them have now. One of them, actually, no, I read four, but one of them, you'll see, I've got the physical copy now, so I'm calling it a physical copy read, because I actually finished the last 100 pages in the physical form, which was kind of nice to switch over from the the Kindle NetGalley version. And then the rest of them I read in paperbacks from ones from my shelves. So I guess that, you know, rather than blabbering on, we should get started. What was the first book that I read this month? Last month, even, because I completely can't even remember. Okay, so first book in the month. Can I do this while holding my tea? Green tea, don't drink tea. This is my You're My Lobster mug because I love friends. So the first book that I read this last month, <laughs> um, I haven't woken up yet today, is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Now this one I do have kind of a fancy edition with the blue sprayed edges because we know I'm a sucker for a sprayed edge on a book. I just, oh, I just, I love them so much. So this is a Waterstones exclusive edition. Now I'd seen loads and loads of people read this so I was so super intrigued to pick it up, intrigued. Yeah, I definitely have not woken up yet today. For that, I do apologise, but you know, needs must. This video needs to go up today, so you know, it's it's got to be done. Now, this one here was very interesting. So essentially, the story is about uh, Mira, who is a black woman who babysits for a white family, and something happens with this family. They've got this little girl. Um, was her name Briar? Briar Rose? I can't remember. Briar? Is that right? Do you know what? I am not sure. Not sure. Um, but she's babysitting with this family. Something happens late at night, so she's out clubbing with her friends, and they, the parents, ask her to go and take the child away for a few hours and keep her occupied because something's happened in the house. Um, so she does that, she takes her to the supermarket that she always goes to, and I think it's someone in the supermarket and also a security guard are like, is that really the child that you're supposed to be looking after? Uh, like, have you stolen the child kind of thing? What are you up to? You look really suspicious, like questioning her and all this. Um, so it kind of stems from that. What I think, talking about it now, ref reflecting upon it, I think that actually that was kind of supposed to be the main stance on the story but what developed, what didn't really follow from that now that I'm thinking about it, you'd think that would be kind of the main topic of the story, but yeah, it wasn't. It was, it turned into more kind of past 
friendships and traumas of other people who were in the book. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, actually, the underlying, the racism is still there. The underlying tone and storyline of racist, racism, but, yeah, thinking about it now, the storyline didn't continue as it should have, really. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what I actually wrote about it at the time. Okay, so, at the, t at the time, obviously I hadn't thought of that, and I gave it five stars. Uh, well written and enjoyable, every part of the story had a solace purpose. Okay, so maybe I'm remembering it wrong, because on the 3rd of April, I said that every part of this story had a solid purpose, um, even though it was predictable, you wanted to keep reading. So, do you know what? I'm not very, not doing a very good job of reviewing this one, because obviously remembered incorrectly, I don't know. But yeah, I gave that one five stars at the time. It feels like I read it months ago. Don't come for me. Next, in April, I read The Hit List by Holly Seddon. Now, I was sent this one from the publishers, which is Trapeze, in exchange for a book review on, like, Instagram or whatever, so I don't have to post this one here, but I am, because it's what I read in April, and that's what I'm sharing now. Now, this one I super, super duper enjoyed. I thought it was so good, I gave it five stars. Um, this is the first Holly Seddon book that I've read, and I'll certainly be picking up more of hers now. I've added some of her books to my wish list. Um, essentially, it was about this woman who her husband has died. She looks at his computer every now and then. Um, I can't remember why, you know, just because he's died and she wants to be kind of close to his things and stuff like that. And um, she finds her name. She realizes that the dark web is on his computer essentially, and then opens it up. And on the last tab is a hit list and her name is on that hit list. Now, I don't know how you would react if you found your name on hit list. Like, what are you gonna do? I honestly, can you even think of what you should do if, if you found your name on hit list? Like, could you go to the police? Well, you've obviously done something wrong to get on that hit list, and you know, if you go to the police, then those people, they're the kind of people that are probably gonna find out. They've got eyes in all kinds of places, and you're gonna get in even more trouble. So. You know, what do you do if your name is found on a hit list? I mean, I'm a nice person, so hopefully my name would never be found on a hit list, but that's what happens in this book. This woman does get found on a hit list. So, you know, very uh, interesting, very interesting read. This is written in multiple perspectives from the perspective of the person that is on the hit list and also the hit a hitman, a hitman person, um, and I just enjoyed it so much. I mean, these type of books are generally written from a multiple perspective, and I do like multiple perspective books, probably because of the fact that I enjoy Jodie Peacock so much, and a lot of her books are written from multi-perspective narratives. Is this the right word? Don't know. I'm really not awake at this moment in time. I'm just to get back into bed and sleep more. But yeah, all in all, really recommend that one. Gave it five stars. I would say definitely go and pick it up if you're like interested in this kind of thing or you enjoy this kind of suspense book. Keeps you on edge. You want to keep going. Fairly gripping. Yeah, five stars. Go and order it, I guess. Next in April, I read The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. This was a NetGalley arc. Oh my god, if my brain would like to wake up, that would be fantastic. This was a NetGalley arc, which actually got released... Oh no, it's not released yet. 18th of May. I thought it had been released. Okay, so that's not out until the 18th of May. I was sure that it came out before then. Are we sure? Let's double check, shall we? Because I'm sure I've seen it in the supermarket. The Summer Job Lizzie Dent. I think it's out, you know. Let's click on Waterstones. Waterstones always knows the answer. Yes, it's out. Okay, so this one's out. Now, it's essentially about this woman who pretends to be her friend and goes to a job that her friend got instead of declining it. She goes to Scotland at this kind of picturesque hotel where they need a wine sommelier. I think that's how you say it. A wine specialist. I don't know why we can't just call it that, because sommelier is very difficult to say. 
So she goes, she has absolutely no idea about wine. She has no serving experience, blah, blah, blah. Um, you just think it's all going to go tits up. And I think it's, it had quite a few laughs along the way. But generally, it had quite a serious undertone of the fact that the main character just got herself in this huge web of lies and she just couldn't get out of it because it was so far gone and it just causes you so many more issues like the more you lie the worse it gets like just don't lie people i don't get the whole lying thing like i just don't just you know just say what you want to say um there's very few instances where a lie is a good thing unless it's like a nice surprise or something if you're throwing a surprise birthday for someone you can tell a little lie if you're going to work in a scottish hotel to be a wine sommelier, som sommelier, is that what we're saying? I don't know, I don't, even, don't, I don't know. Um, that's, that's generally not a good lie to tell, because that's never going to end well, is it? So like I say, a few laughs along the way, a uh, little bit of a heavy undertone with the whole lying. She got herself in such a mess. I kind of just felt sorry for her. Um, I was like, honey, no, you need to sort yourself out. Like, your life is just, you know, got a bit topsy-turvy. Get on your two feet and sort yourself out. And, you know, she, she didn't really do that. But, yeah, maybe by the end of the book, she was a bit better, to be fair. The thing that this book did make me want to do, which is something that I've been wanting to do for ages anyway, and I swear in almost every video I mention the fact that I want to go to Scotland, um, it made me just want to go to a quaint little hotel in Scotland, in the middle of nowhere, whether you've got, like, blocks and everything, you know, those big things of water, like a lake, we would call it, but in Scotland it's a lock. I don't know what makes it different, but, you know, probably because there's a Loch Ness monster there. I don't know. Don't ask me. Only been to Edinburgh and that's it. It is a very easy read, but I would say that it's probably best read in kind of like a few sittings um, rather than drawing it out. I don't think it's a book that's best drawn out. I did draw it out a little bit. And I think I would have much more enjoyed it if I read it in kind of like three or four sittings. So I ended up giving that one three stars, which is kind of sad because I was really, really looking forward to it and thought that I'd really enjoy it. And it was okay, but it just didn't take all my pickle, really. <laughs> what a phrase that is. Next, I read The House Swap by Joe Lovett. This one came out on the 19th of April. I think so it's out already um it was about these two people one lives in kind of rural idyllic was it in maine countryside in maine i think it was maine with this big house in the states um with like animals alpacas things like this and then there is this other character who lives in a flat in london he's very straight laced this is what i want this is what i get kind of thing um and they swap houses for a little bit and, you know, it's very stereotypical. You can tell from the cover that it's going to be a romance. Um, they swap houses. Uh, they start by hating each other. I mean, what what do you think is going to happen? It's very predictable. It's a very easy read, very stereotypical, very predictable. But it does kind of hit the marker perfectly. It is really enjoyable. And the characters are very interesting. Even the one that's a bit difficult, you at first you're like, oh, you're a pain in the bloody butt. But he gets better. He doesn't stay like that forever for the whole story. So you don't despise him for the whole book, which is fantastic. I think that it wrapped up really well. Didn't leave you stranded in the middle of the plot. It gave like a good number of pages to do a good conclusion and not leave you kind of like, oh, I want to know what else happens. You got given all the information that you needed. And so for that very reason, I gave it four stars. I did quite enjoy the house swap. Next, I read Until Next Weekend by Rachel Marks. This one also came out at the end of April. So you can now go and purchase this one. Now, this was about a guy called Noah and he's split from his ex-wife. Well, from his wife. So it's now his ex-wife, if that makes sense. Am I... I'm not making any sense. And he has now become the weekend dad. Um, everything that he used to despise and he's trying to learn how that works for him and his two young boys. Now, mostly, again, this was quite a serious kind of book, which is not what I was expecting. I don't think it was supposed to be. There were a few lighthearted, you know, bits in there, but I did find it quite serious, mostly. I think that it's probably best enjoyed if you're looking for something that has a few laughs, 
is a little bit more enjoyable, quite an interesting story, something that you wouldn't usually get. I don't think I've read something with that kind of storyline before. Um, but it kind of gets your mind ticking and thinking about how the characters react to certain situations and everything. I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars and I thought it was really interesting and enlightening to read, like I say, something a bit different from the perspective of The Weekend's dad. So yeah, I think that I would definitely recommend this one for my four stars. Uh, quite enjoyable. Not by far, you know, not the best book in the world, not the worst book, but it was enjoyable. Next in April, I read No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. Now, I read this because in the last week I was trying to squeeze in loads more books. Um, so I picked this up because it's really small. Now, I am totally on the side of, you know, making changes for climate change so that we actually have a planet, etc, etc. I think, you know, Greta has a very powerful, loud voice that because she has become such a public figure, that is brilliant. You know, like David Ashbrook, people listen. Um, I didn't realise that this was just printings of her speeches, which are very similar. It wasn't, this wasn't at all engaging. I gave it two stars. It was very, very repetitive. And I'm not sure if it's because of um, the way that Greta speaks about climate change or because they're speeches to a room full of people and it's just printed on paper um, or maybe because of Greta's directness. I don't know. Um, but this was very, very preachy in the fact that this is that, that's what you're going to do, you know, there was no, right, so this is the situation, here are, you know, the kind of paths that are possible for us to go down, you know, and encouraging people to do it, it was like, no, you're going to do it, which, you know, is what needs to be the case, but to read it, it was just like, you know, I agree with you, but saying it in that way isn't going to get anyone to listen and appreciate what you're saying so you know I have an appreciation for how loud her voice is in this but like I say it just didn't agree with me even though I agree with the premise of making these changes and we need a planet there is no planet b you know the our future generations are really going to struggle 100% I'm on the same page but it was just difficult to read. And that wasn't because it was difficult to read because like, oh my God, the planet's gonna die. I, I totally haven't, totally understand that. Um, and we need to do something about it. But yeah, it's, yeah, two stars, unfortunately, sorry. Last but not least, the final book that I read in April was The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. Now this is the one that I started reading as a net galley arc and then my physical copy arrived. I ordered a hard edition that is signed by Beth. All of my, a hard edition, a hardback edition. Um, all of my Beth O'Leary books, actually I've managed to get hardback signed editions. The flat share and the switch are up there somewhere. Um, so I thought, why not continue in that manner? I just, I think that's, that's kind of nice. Actually, I should compare her signatures. I think it's pretty much the same. Now. I was super looking forward to this book. I think all of us are who've read Beth's books and it feels like we've been counting down to it for so long. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it as much as I was expecting to. So basically it's about these two people who have broken up like a year or so ago, haven't spoken since, and they're both traveling to a wedding in Scotland. They're in a car accident without realizing they're both going to the same place. And she ends up giving, she and her sister, end up giving him and his mate a lift to the wedding, even though they haven't spoken for like a year. They're not on speaking terms. They broke up on bad terms. So yeah, obviously that's going to be very uncomfortable. I would not want to be in that situation. I would just walk to Scotland. I'm going to walk the whole way. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm not getting in that car. I'm going to walk to Scotland. That's what I'd be like. Um, but they didn't do that because they like to put themselves through, you know, uncomfortable situations, obviously. Now, it was obviously the development of like what happened on that road trip and it went to flashbacks of what happened previously. I do think what happened in the last hundred pages drew the story, drew the story, is that right? I don't know, English fails me, um, brought the story together 
There we go. Um, kind of sealed it up nicely, but uh, I just think that the majority of the story, actually, uh, really the whole story, had quite a heavy, negative kind of feel to it. It felt like you were reading something that had quite like a strain on it, and it just wasn't as enjoyable as Beth's other books. Now, like I say, obviously the ending kind of saved it a little bit, little bit, and because of that, I gave it three stars. And because I have an appreciation for the fact that Beth is a brilliant writer, even though I didn't enjoy this one, I think that the flat chair is still my favourite of her books. I really enjoyed the switch, but it wasn't didn't blow my mind. Really enjoyed it, but the flat chair was one of those that like I was like, wow, I really enjoyed this. I have reread that again since. So, and that only came out a couple of years ago. But yeah, I just thought it was a bit heavy and negative, um, which is not really what I expect from Beth's writing. I just kind of think of her as like really enjoyable, relaxing reads that you can kind of dip in and out of. Um, whereas, yeah, this one was a little bit heavy. I mean, maybe it was just me that found this, but the front cover of the little one, if people have got mini reviews, someone's call it joyful. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it joyful. Um... She weaves laughter and tears seamlessly through her novels. Well, I mean, yes, but not in this one, I don't think. So all in all, I just feel really disappointed about this book. Um, I have seen a couple of other people who didn't enjoy it as much as they were expecting to either. It's not the worst book in the world, um, but I think because we're all comparing it to her past books, it's just not as good. If it was, if she didn't have the past books to compare it to, it'd probably be a lot better, but you know, that's the trouble, I guess, when you're bringing out more books, we're just, we are very much comparing them to, to previous ones. So unfortunately that's the case. But like I say, have an appreciation still that Beth is a very good writer. It's just that this storyline wasn't for me, didn't really do a lot for me. Um, but I live in hope that her future books will be more like The Flat Share and The Switch and a little bit more lighthearted. Fingers crossed. Okay, so those are the seven books that I read in the month of April. I'm hoping in May that I'll be able to fit in my eight. So I better get cracking because what is it? The second or third of May already? Let's see. What is the second already? So, I mean, at least 30 days to September, April, June and November. Okay, so at least we've got 31 days in this month. I've got one extra day. So... I've got to make sure I utilise it. I am going to read a couple of graphic novels this month. My Heartstopper um, series volume four has arrived. So, you know, that will be read in like a couple of hours. I actually really, really want to read that soon because it hasn't actually come out yet. But Waterstones seem to be sending out all of theirs early, which is great news because I've got mine. Um, so do need to get cracking on this month's reading, but hopefully, you know, in May I'll be able to reach eight. Seven was still good last month because I was busy. So I still kind of, you know, did well, just didn't smash it out the park this time. It is what it is, you know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you've read any of these books, please let me know. Let me know your thoughts. If you've read The Road Trip, please tell me what you think because I'm very intrigued to know what other people think about this book. So that's that. Happy reading and I'll see you all soon. Bye!